Hollywood is the capital of make-believe, but throughout the history of the Little Rascals, originally known as Our Gang, producer Hal Roach had to deal time and again with one fact of life that couldn't be avoided. Every kid gets older. So it was that he and his staff were always on the lookout for new juvenile talent, and cleverly finding ways to introduce the newcomers right on screen, as they found their special niche among the Rascals. Our first film, the wonderful Helping Grandma, was made toward the end of 1930, a time when series veteran Farina, Alan Hoskins, was on his way out, and Stymie, Matthew Beard, was stealing scenes left and right as his replacement in the gang. Stymie has a double-talk dialogue exchange with Weezer in this film that might have served Abbott and Costello at a later time. Chubby and Marianne were in their final season with the gang, and so was Jackie Cooper, who would leave for greener pastures of feature film stardom. The title of our second short says everything you need to know about the meteoric rise of Hal Roach's great discovery, George McFarland. The film is titled Spanky, as a reflection of the enthusiasm everybody at the Roach studio had for this adorable three-year-old from Texas. In the past and future history of the gang, no child was ever singled out. The Rascals were the combined stars of those films, but Spanky was an exception. Before long, he was getting special star billing on main titles and even posters for the series. One look at this early outing from 1932 tells you why. In fact, the scene in which little Spanky tries to catch a bug with his hammer was actually part of the youngster's screen test. Mr. Roach liked it so much, they used it in the finished film. But even Spanky had to grow up sometime, and that's plainly evident in Little Papa, made three years later. He's still pretty young, mind you, but where in the earlier short he was the pesky baby brother, He's now cast as the older brother who can't go out to play because he's got to mind a younger sibling. Finally, in Too Too Young, made in 1936, Spanky has come of age. He and Alfalfa are comedy pros by now, and it's Buckwheat and Porky who are cast as the little kids who can be taken advantage of. At least that's the theory, but this being a comedy, those two stalwart pals have the last laugh after all. Now, I don't mean to imply that Spanky or Alfalfa had reached the end of the road by 1936. They and their co-stars of the mid-30s had become so popular and so completely identified with our gang that they remained with the series well into the 1940s until they were literally bursting out of their clothes. You run along home, and I'll charge it. Thanks, Grandma. Gee whiz, Grandma. Don't you know that guy's jipping us? 
I know he is, Jack. But do you remember? You got a quarter's worth of molasses out of me that same way once. I, I was afraid you'd remember that. Well, we all have our weak moments. But that guy is permanent. And do you remember what I said that day? Ill-gotten gains don't do anyone any good. Ill-gotten gains give me a bellyache once. Start the argument. What we got in the shape of cucumbers? Oh, we got some nice bananas. Boy, dead man sure ain't mad. Guess he didn't want no bananas. What kind of candy is my baby's going to have today? How many are them for a penny? There are three for a penny. What? Only three? Only three. I don't like them, Carl. You ain't going to get any anyhow. I know. How many of them for a penny? There are four for a penny. Store people? Yes, they were here once, but they didn't decide. I think they're going to build down the street further. You know what that means, don't you? If them chain store people don't build, I may change my mind. But fifteen hundred dollars isn't enough for this business. Oh, all right, but mark my words. If they don't buy, you'll be out in the cold. The gold chain of pop water at one of those chain stores turned all green. I'm going uptown for a little while. 
And you'll take good care of the store, won't you? Yes, Grandma. Yeah. And if anyone should phone, just tell them to call later. All right. Boy, I'd like to work. Yeah, you ought to. All you do is eat candy. You were up and walk yourself, Ronald. Look, who's that? That's them chain store people. We gotta talk them out of buying the store. Hello, boys. Hey, boys, is Mrs. Mack around? <laughs> oh, uh, she's out trying to buy some money for the store. Borrow some money? She's busted. She hasn't had anything to eat for a week. Any chains in this town, anyhow. No, eating the banks close on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, everybody's starting to death in this town. <laughs> it's getting me down, too. I used to be fat. <laughs> Say, <laughs> uh, when do you think Mrs. Mack will return? Oh, she won't be back for days and days. Now, you give this to Mrs. Mack, tell her to study it, and we'll return soon. Okay. Well, bye-bye. By the store? No, sir. He scared him away. Didn't we, fellas? Yeah. Hey, what's that you got there? Let me have it. That's from Miss Mack. No, it's not. That's from Miss Mack. Miss Mack.
having trouble with the car, and we'll be a little late. All right. I'll be quiet with you, Weezer. She hung up on me. She says it's not enough. Not enough? That's funny. Call her again. Now, Mrs. Mack, we want to be fair with you, and I'll add another $500 on that. Carl, wait! Say, give me another nickel here. I'll make you a flat offer of $5,000. That's my last offer. Hang on now! She hung up on me. She did. Yeah, the chain store people were here and told the children they didn't want to buy the place. Sign this and your troubles will be over. Well, wait till I get my glasses. All right. Will you answer the phone, please? Yes, yes. Hello? Don't do anything now till you hear from us. We'll be over to your store in ten minutes. Come on, Billy. Wrong number. There you are. Just sign right down there. My old store. <laughs> For 25 years, it's been my old. Oh, stop your sniveling and, and sign it. I 
Mark sold the store. The store's mine now. And you young hoodlums will have to get out of here and stay out. Indeed, they will not have to get out of here and stay out. Well, they will. I'm the boss now. <laughs> You're just too late, gentlemen. The store and property belong to me. Hey, Mother, you signed a blank paper. You tricked me. Oh, I did not trick you. This is the paper you should have signed. I told you over the phone I'd give you $1,500 more than the price agreed upon. Over the phone? Yes. Wait a minute. And a boy, Grandma! I'll get you.
For heaven's sake, Spanky, what on earth are you doing now? Vodka! Well, you let the bugs alone. Come on and get your bath. Yes, Mama's little baby boy. Take a good bath. And, and get my head down quick so play off. <laughs> That's it. Splash! Splash! That's it. All over your back. would buy some disinfectant. Well, if the bugs can't live on what we live on, let them starve to death. Well, it's a wonder they haven't starved to death. You're so stingy. I'm not stingy. I'm only careful with my money. If I knew where you'd hid all that money your grandfather left you, I'd spend every cent of it on the children. Well, you'll never find it. Say, listen, I have to have $10 today. You'll get five dollars.
I could cough today. My cough isn't so good today, Uncle Tom. Listen. <laughs> you ain't gonna be long for this world. You're gonna bump off soon. Yes, I can hear the angels singing now. <laughs> before you let me go.
it, Ghana.
Sankey, I have to go downtown. You have to stay here and mind the baby. Oh, Mom, we're just starting a big game. Yeah, he's our captain, and we can't play without him. Captain or no captain, he's got to mind the baby. Well, what does that mean? It means I mind the baby. I can. I'm leaving now. If the baby falls asleep, take her inside and put her to bed. If the baby falls asleep, take her inside and put her to bed. Well, she won't go to sleep. Why not? Because she <laughs> ain't tired. Well, we'll make her tired. Why don't you tell her she's supposed to go to sleep? I don't know what to do with him. What? You think so? Yeah, I think so. I think so, too. Let's go, Scott. When I was a kid, my mommy used to read me different songs. Yeah, we know. Keep quiet. You shut up. Try. 
want to do? There's too much light in here. And even I can't even go to sleep. I'll fix that. You just keep snoring. And I'll pull down the K-U-R-T-I-N. What does that mean? That means I pull down the curtain. Oh. Hey, Spank, look! Never mind that. Let's go. 
Well, we gotta do the same dry. Well, I'll be right back. All you gotta do is zip. Well, fellas, 
All you gotta do is flip. Come on. This right and no zip. Oh, get out! All right, Alfalfa, give it all you got. how much we can do before recess. Prepare for recess, children. Now all walk out quietly like little ladies and gentlemen.
No. Now what are we going to do? I got another idea. They'll give them to a G-man, won't they? I guess so. Well, that's just what we're going to be. Come on. But how are we going to be a G-man? You'll see. the talking this time. Why? Because I can make myself look older and you can. How? Well, first I get a mustache. A mustache? Uh-huh. Then I talk real deep. Like this. Why, you didn't talk so good before, did you? And besides, I look older than you do. See my wrinkles? Now, wait a minute, Spanky. I, I didn't mean nothing by it. You look older than you do the talking. Don't move. Uh. How's that for a mustache? I'm wrong. Because you know, D-Man, you're too young to shoot them off. I'll shoot them off for you. And you just stand over here and be quiet. Buckwheat. Thank you. You're welcome. Here, take care of these and don't let anything happen to them. Don't worry. You can trust me. Now, children, who knows today's recitation real well? Do you want to recite alfalfa? Yes, ma'am. All right. Go right ahead. 
Now you're going to hear some real talking. The charge of the light brigade. <laughs> Half a leg, half a leg, half a leg, onward. In the valley of death, rode the 600. Forward to the light brigade. Charge for the guns, he said. In the valley of death, rode the 600. Spanky, don't interrupt. Thank you, teacher. Continue, Alfalfa. <coughs> For the light brigade, was there a man dismayed? Now though the soldiers knew someone had blundered. There's not to make replies, there's not to reason why. There's but to do and die in the valley of Vedef, road the 600. Cannons to the left of me. Cannons on the right of me. Cannons in front of me. Valley dense thunder. Ah! 